everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi. My name is Busari Imoliayo and I'm a registered nurse based in Nigeria. On this channel, I film content related to nursing and healthcare. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the nursing care plan for bronchial asthma. If you're new here, please click on the subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out when I drop another video. With that being said, let's get right into the topic for today. <music> So if you don't have a previous understanding of what bronchial asthma is or you want to just get the basics, I have a video on that and I'm going to leave it down in the description box below. You can check it out possibly before you watch this or after you're done watching this one so you can flow easily. Alright, so let's get familiar with the diagnosis for today. So today we're going to be working on two diagnoses. The first one is ineffective airway clearance related to bronchospasm evidenced by dyspnea. While the second one is anxiety related to change in health status evidenced by apprehensiveness. So the first diagnosis is just trying to imply that the respiratory tract, in this case, um, talking about the bronchi, is not patent, is not clear. And because there is bronchospasm, now the word bronchospasm refers to when the walls of the bronchi are more or less, um, should I say rigid, they are thrown into spasm, but in a very simpler way, they are rigid, they uh, are hard, and they create a very little passage for air. And evidenced by dyspnea, dyspnea is the medical term for difficulty in breathing. Now, talking about the second diagnosis, anxiety related to change in health status evidenced by apprehensiveness. This simply implies that the patient is very anxious because of the whole thing going on. And the person may not want to talk to anybody, may not want to cooperate, or the person is very scared. They begin to display so much emotional disturbance. I hope you guys are getting my point. Now, there are so many other nursing diagnoses that could come in for bronchial asthma, but for today's tutorial, I'm just going to be focusing on these two. There are a whole lot of other nursing diagnoses you can actually work on. All right, now that we have a proper understanding of what the nursing diagnoses we're working with today are, let's get right into the objective nursing intervention as well as the scientific rationales before moving on to the evaluation. So the objective for the first diagnosis is that patient will achieve and maintain a clear airway within 45 minutes of nursing intervention. Now this is specific and I've measured it like it is achievable with something that you can achieve within 45 minutes. Of course, breathing is very important because you don't want the person to become um, unconscious or brain dead as a result of low supply of oxygen. And this objective is also time bound. You can see 45 minutes indicated there. It is a short term nursing goal. So let's go ahead to talk about the nursing interventions. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that if it is an emergency situation and the attack is severe, the first thing you should think of is removing them from the course of the attack. Possibly the patient's, like in your question, it was indicated that the patient is near a smoky area or a burning bush then you know the first thing you have to do is to remove them from that area so as to decrease the whole um, allergy coming into the airway then next thing is to help them use their inhaler help them use their inhaler or call an emergency number that is when it is an emergency situation now the next interventions i'm going to be running through is possibly when the attack is not really severe or the person is just having difficulty in breathing and the person comes to the hospital for admission so now talking about when the patient is being admitted the first thing is to assess respiratory rate depth and rhythm you want to assess how well the person is breathing um the rate is it up to the normal range is the person breathing deeply or just like is the muscle of respiration moving effectively those are things you want to check then this is important because you want to obtain baseline data now for this page you notice that i have some written in black ink and some in blue ink the black ones are the nursing interventions while the blue ones are the scientific rationales now the next thing is you have to encourage deep breathing and coughing exercise and the reason is that deep breathing and coughing exercise will help to break down expectorate or excess secretions in the oh break down um excess secretions in the lungs maybe they've 
uh, lumped up together by deep coughing deep breathing they'll break then you help them to expel it either by coughing them out most likely by coughing them out rather the next thing is to alternate period of activities with that of rest this will help to prevent fatigue and conserve energy for the patient to breathe properly then the last intervention i have here is administering oxygen if indicated and this will help to correct hypoxemia hypoxemia is a medical term for low level of oxygen in the blood now if you notice how i arranged it the first one is assessment and the last one is more like drug administration so you have to properly arrange your interventions in terms of exam start with assessment line up other independent nursing action then you would make the last intervention an interdependent or non-independent role of nursing i hope you are getting my point so let's quickly move on to the evaluation and go to the second diagnosis now the evaluation i have here is that patients achieved a clear airway after 35 minutes of nursing intervention like after i assess the airway encourage person to breathe deeply cough um, deeply then i allow the patient to rest give oxygen as indicated then the person achieved a clear airway now not one thing in this evaluation the time frame here which is 35 minutes is within the 45 minutes i earlier mentioned in the objective when you're writing evaluation ensure that you don't exceed the time frame because if it is an exam now this is basically for exam situation if you exceed your time range then you are obviously saying that everything you wrote was wrong and definitely they will mark you down so always take note and make sure that your time range is reasonable and you don't go beyond that in your evaluation but in a real life situation if it is not achieved then you are just going to put that down in the evaluation then you go back to the assessment stage and planning stage and all of that now let's move to the second nursing diagnosis so the objective for the second diagnosis which is on anxiety is that patient will verbalize a reduction in level of anxiety experience throughout period of hospitalization so this is more or less a long-term nursing objective so let's get into the interventions so the first thing is we are assessing for signs of anxiety such as cold and sweaty hands or restlessness now identifying signs of anxiety will help you know that okay this person is anxious and there's need to um make measures or to quickly intervene to reduce level of anxiety the next thing is you provide comfort such as a calm and quiet environment or soft music that would play in the world though this may not be so possible in nigerian context but it is also a good way of lowering anxiety now the rationale is that calm environment reduce oxygen consumption the person is not doing any um strenuous activity that rely require a lot of oxygen consumption so the person would be uh, um taking up little oxygen and there will be more energy for breathing and the person will be more calm next thing is to explain every procedure you are doing to the patients and make sure you explain in a very simple manner now the rationale is that if the patient understands or is aware of everything you're doing their level of anxiety will decrease and the person would cooperate finally you can also always give the patient room to ask questions because the fact that you're explaining the procedures to the patient doesn't mean the patient may not have questions he or she he or she may want to ask and whenever they ask questions you ensure you answer them truthfully and honestly and the rationale is that when you attend to their concerns they feel more calm more relaxed okay i'm in a safe place the people here actually have my interest at heart and they are willing to care for me so those are four um basic nursing interventions you can consider in case for anxiety in this situation now finally let us move into the evaluation so my evaluation for this um care plan is that patients verbalize decreased level of anxiety all through period of hospitalization and at the point of discharge kindly ignore the typo error of that patient so take into con uh, take note that i took into consideration the time frame my earlier set at the objective i said patient will verbalize less anxiety throughout this period of hospitalization i'm here saying the same thing that the patient expressed um, decreased level of anxiety 
and also at the point of discharge so that means anxiety was reduced and even when the person was going home the person still maintained that they are not so anxious all right it's been a wonderful tutorial i hope you guys understood everything if you have questions can you leave them in the comment section i'll be more than happy to attend to them and i'll see you in my next video guys bye